Hello YouTube, it's Barbara Jean. <coughs> I have several videos I want to make today. Um, I thought it'd be kind of um, a good time to uh, talk about some of the adventures I've had in my life. And I've had several, <laughs> many adventures. Uh, those who've been uh, watching my YouTube channel for some time um, and familiar with some of my older videos, you know, that I've, I've you know, given my testimony on several occasions of when the Lord has um, done special things for me or um, when I've had a special deliverance or a special, um, um, j just my walk with the Lord has been rather interesting. I, I want to go back to um, the one of some of the first videos that I've done and, and talk again about how the Lord, uh, when I was a teenager, and the Lord, uh, I don't believe it was a coincidence. I believe it was done del deliberately that I was given a book by someone who gave me this book to read. And this book changed my life. Um, it, it, uh, I guess it gave me my life purpose, if you will. Um, this book, it was called, is called um, Heinz, Heinz Feet on High Places. It's an allegory. And uh, when I read the book, it, it, it changed my life because it, um, I had gave my life to Christ when I was 12 years old. Uh, 11 going on 12 actually and, uh, and this is after a year of the Lord the Holy Spirit prompting me and asking me if I wanted to be saved do I know I'm saved do I want to be saved do I want to know make sure I, I'm saved and so after several months of the Lord coming to me uh, as a young girl uh, I gave my life to Jesus now what's interesting is that like I said it wasn't coincidental someone gave me um, this book called Hind's Feet on High Places, and it's an allegory about a, a girl named Little Much Afraid, who had a relationship with the Savior, and although she had club feet, she wanted to be able to walk with the Lord, because the Lord would come and visit her, but she wanted to be able to walk with the Lord, and so the Lord took her on a series of adventures in her life. Um, sometimes she felt very close to the Lord. Sometimes the Lord would walk with her in a physical sort of way. And other times he would appear to leave her alone and she'd be left on her own to um, discover her faith, if you will, you know, to discover her faith. And so anyway, this book had a huge impact on me and, and I prayed a prayer. I didn't realize uh, how seriously the Lord took it, but he took it very seriously when I said, Lord, I want to walk with you in the high places. And I was a fearful, very fearful person. I lived with a lot of fear. And um, the Lord took it very seriously. And uh, thus began my series of interesting <laughs> adventures with the Lord. Lots and lots of amazing adventures. Uh the first one I want to talk about is actually, um, oh, let me show you. I want to show you some things. Oh, just a second. <laughs> Sorry about that. I just uh, forgot I wanted to show you some pictures. <clears throat> Uh, I want to show you some of my adventures in pictures, just some of the interesting costumes I've been able to wear. I had a short stint in, in university and and uh, and uh, singing on stage, and uh, that was one of the adventures. But I wanted to actually give you a, a story about how the Lord uh, kind of brought me into some of this adventure. Um, where should I start? Uh, 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 uh. Let's see. Oh, let's just show you this picture here. This is um, this was a, an opera I was in, you know, in university. See, that's not me. I'm not in in this picture. But this is we did the uh, opera by Puccini, uh, Gianni Schicchi. <laughs> that was very very fun. I'm going to show you myself in this. Here I am. I'm the one running, and uh, I played the heroine in that film, I mean, in that uh, opera in, in university. That was a lot of fun. 
that I had to say. And in the same year, I played a nun. <laughs> uh, that's me sitting down there. So that's uh, some of the fun things I did. And here I am again as a nun. That's me in the front there. That was the Swar Angelica, again by Puccini. This is, uh, again, this is me and, and Johnny's Kiki. That's me standing next to the guy in black. It was a very fun opera to do. And I wanted to talk about, so I'll show you some costumes from my, I was in a professional, very professional show for uh, a few years. Uh, this is one of the costumes I've got to wear. That's me there. One of the costumes I got. It was 1920s. I'm wearing a hat, and I'm actually standing next to my dressing table. That's me there. And uh, this is another one of my costumes. And another girl who was standing, who uh, was in the dressing room with me. Very sweet girl. And that's me in one of my costumes. And... This is some, a couple of girls who were in the dressing room who got to wear these beautiful dresses. Aren't they gorgeous? Oh, this is so gorgeous. And then this is me and another girl. This is in Australia, though. This is me, and I'm the one in pink. And that was in Australia. I like the hat. <laughs> anyway, uh, one of the adventures I wanted to talk about, um, how the Lord had actually brought me into the situation that I was in, how I got to be you know, part of this show business for a little while, as one of part of the adventure of my life that I've gone through. Uh, when I was, um, it's kind of a long story, I was in, um, I was really struggling with financially. I had left university. I didn't finish my degree because of um, the, the battle I had to do with these witches that were in the university system. And uh, just let me stop and warn you people who have children in university. The university is full of secular, humanistic uh, ideology, and also witchcraft. So if you have kids in university, pray for them, pray for them, pray for them. Okay, because uh, when I was in university, I had to, I had to fight some demons and some, some witches, and it was a very huge battle. Um, but anyway, um, this adventure I want to talk about right now is when I had left university and I was looking for work. Now, I was I used to work as a secretary or um, work in office, did a lot of office work. I was a terrible secretary. <laughs> I was terrible. But nonetheless, that was how I earned my living for the most part. And um, uh, I had, I, I didn't know what I was supposed to do. I was, my student loans were starting to come in and I didn't have a way to pay anything and um, it was really bad. It was a bad situation for me, and I was getting pretty desperate because I couldn't find work. You know, I had found little jobs here and there, but nothing that would um, pay my bills or or get me going anywhere. So, and I really wasn't thinking about um, a showbiz career. Showbiz career um, really wasn't part of my real plan. But however, my mother had signed me up for an audition, or she she gave me a newspaper clipping for an audition. Um, and she said, you're going to go and do this. My mother pushed me into a lot of things, which were, <laughs> which she was led by the Holy Spirit. And uh, so I did. I went to this audition, and I didn't think I would get it because I hadn't heard anything from, from them for months. And I just figured it was, uh, you know, another dead end. And um, anyway, I had fasted. I decided I needed to hear from God because I was really struggling. So I fasted for 21 days. All I had was water for 21 days. And uh, nothing happened. I didn't get any messages. I didn't get any revelation, nothing. And I was getting very, very discouraged and very disappointed with God. I just felt so um, forgotten. And while I was in this um, state, I got angrier and angrier. This, all this anger and, and angst started to emerge, which is, I guess, what the Lord was trying to bring out of me anyway, was this anger, this att attitude of anger and, and feeling abandoned by the Lord. So, um, anyway, the, on the last couple of days of my fast, um, I was particularly angry. You know, I think this was the second to the last day of my fast and I was really annoyed and if <laughs> people were calling me up and they were, they were 
getting on my case and I was yelling at them and they were yelling at me and I was in a pretty bad mood and they were telling me to, my, my, my brother called me up and we had a big argue with him, argument with him on the phone and he told me to mind my business about certain other things. <laughs> so I was in a pretty bad mood. So I, I laid down on my bed one day and I was lying there on my bed and, and I, after hanging, hanging up off my brother, I was having a really bad day. My mother wasn't there. So I was really annoyed. So I <laughs> said, I'm going to sit here on my bed. I'm going to lie here on my bed. And I put this pillow over my head and I said, I'm going to lie here until and I'm just going to think about pleasant things. I'm going to dream that I'm in a garden. I'm in a beautiful garden. That's what I'm going to do. So I put this pillow over my head and I started to visualize that I was in a beautiful garden and I was walking along and smelling the roses and everything was beautiful and wonderful in my life. And um, then I started having this vision and I didn't know what it was at the time. I just thought it was uh, me in my imagination and it turned out it wasn't. It was actually a vision from the Lord. And this vision, I was in the garden, and in this garden, um, I was. It was surrounded by walls, and as I was in this garden, I, uh, I began to feel like I wasn't. I didn't quite fit. I wasn't. I didn't belong here, or it. It wasn't. I didn't find. I didn't find comfort and peace. But I was trying to. But as I was walking in this garden, I was pushed outside of the garden. Uh, um, um, I was pushed onto a path that was um, beside the garden wall and there was this garden gate excuse me and I was pushed through the gate and I was pushed onto the path beside the garden and I wasn't happy about that I didn't want to be on the garden path I wanted to be I wanted to be in the garden not outside the garden but every time I turned to go through the gate another a wall would come up in front of me or another gate would come up in front of me so I was struggling to get back into the garden, but these gates and these walls kept coming up in front of me. And I, I was getting very upset and very angry. And to the point where in my dream or this vision, because I was awake, I became very angry and I couldn't understand why I couldn't control in my conscious mind. I didn't understand why I couldn't control this dream. I didn't understand why I couldn't I mean, I thought this was just my imagination, even while it was happening. I thought, why can't I get back into this garden? This is my imagination. <laughs> this is my time to visualize something, something happy. And I can't, I can't control this. So anyway, so I was getting very frustrated and very angry. So in my vision and um, in my dream, this vision, I decided I was going to pout. <laughs> I'm going to pout. I'm really angry about this. So I went and found a cave to go sit in, and I sat in this cave, and I, I crossed my arms, and I sang, I'm pouting. And what was interesting, while that, at that moment, I became, became aware of a, uh, of a presence or an energy. Uh, it was God, but at the time, I wasn't really thinking that. I was just thinking I became aware of an energy, and this energy was actually quite amused by my, my, uh, <laughs> my feelings and my it wasn't that it was laughing at me like, you know, what an idiot, that kind of feeling. It was like a, an amused parent watching a child, um, you, you know, having a tantrum. That's what it was. It felt like a loving parent watching over me and amused by my antics. So well, I was in this cave, so I'm pouting. But I wasn't allowed to stay in the cave very long. I was put back on the path. It was like, and I was even angry about that. I was like, why could, why can't I just sit in, sit in the cave? I mean, I want to pout. But I was put back on the path. And I'm walking along this pathway that ran along the outside of this garden. And as I, I figured, well, you know, I can't get back in the garden. I might as well just walk down the path. So I started walking down the path towards this. It, I don't know where I was going. It didn't seem like I was going anywhere. And I, I looked up into the sky and out of the sky came this door it was coming down out of the sky. Oh, oh! I, let me just say that um, before I give you this, um, after I was pouting, I had woken up. Basically, I came uh, conscious of the fact that I was um, 
having a vision or a dream. I wasn't really conscious that it was coming from God so much as the fact that I, I, I sat up at that moment. I took the pillow off my face, face and I thought, I don't like the way this is going. I don't understand why I can't control this, you know. So I, I laid back down on my pillow and put the pillow on another pillow over my face. And again, this is the dream started to continue. Even though I had stopped it at the part of the cave, that's why I was back on the path. Because after I laid back down and put the pillow on my head, the dream, the vision continued. Okay, so I wanted to throw that in there. So the, anyway, I, I was walking down this path and this door started coming out of heaven. And it was quite high up, but I could see that it was a door and there was an, a, a golden arch across the door. And across the arch of the door said, um, God's best was written across the arch over the door. And as it was coming down of heaven, I was thinking to myself, what is this? And I'm thinking, you're not going to get me to go through that door. Now, this is my thinking, people, especially back then. This is the way I thought. If I go through that door, I'm going to end up being a missionary in Africa. And I don't want to be a missionary in Africa. <laughs> That's what, that was my thinking. Because I didn't want to be a missionary. I mean, it, I didn't feel it was my life path. And I had no desire to go to Africa to be a missionary. But that's what I thought God meant for me to do. You know, if you if you follow God's way, you everyone has to be a missionary. Um, but, you know, there's other ways of being missionaries in our world. We can be a missionary right where you are. Being a, here on YouTube is being a missionary right where I am, so I don't mind that at all. So I can actually reach Africa right from my own home. Isn't that amazing? We have amazing technology today. So anyway, this path, this door came down onto the path. Now the, it had landed, um, I guess it was about at least 100 yards away from me, okay, up the pathway. Now, because I didn't want to go be a missionary in Africa, I turned around and I started running in the opposite direction from this door. Now, like I said, God's sense of humor. God is so has such a sense of humor. He didn't uh, he didn't rebuke me. He just had this door chase me. I mean, I was running down the path and this door started to chase me down the path only it was getting closer and closer and closer to me and I was running I was looking oh no you're not going to catch me I'm not going through that door so next thing you know after a few moments I was actually at the door the door was right behind my back and I'm I'm holding on to the door jams you know holding on to it going yeah I'm not going through you can't make me I'm not going through <laughs> Next thing I know, I'm through the door. Whether I liked it or not, I was through the door. So um, against my will, I went through the door that said God's best. So I got across. On the, I was standing on the other side of the door, and I went, oh, how did I get here? This is not, <laughs> I, I had no intention of going through this door. But I found myself back on the path, facing the direction that I was going before the door started chasing me. And uh, so I'm looking down the path and I'm going okay well I'm through the door there's nothing I could do okay if I, you want me to go to Africa I'll go to Africa <laughs> <laughs> next thing I know I'm walk so I started walking down the path in the direction I was going before I went through you know before the door was chasing me and it, within moments I was being picked up now I didn't see them but I felt like I was being picked up on either side by two angels they had picked me up by my arms here and they were they were lifting me up into the air and they flew me over the garden and I there were people down below who were pointing up they were looking up and pointing at me as I was going by and uh, so this um, I was pl flying over the garden and I'm thinking what is happening this is really really interesting so <laughs> we flew over this garden and then we flew over what looked like a, a, a lot of flat land okay and then we came to um, what looked like a, after we flew for some time, the, the, I was brought down in front of what looked like a theater, okay? And I, I stood in front of this do these doors, and the doors opened, and I walked down this dark aisle up to, this da to the stage, and there were some stairs that went up to either side of the stage. And I walked up the side of the stairs, up to the stage, and I took my place in front of and it was at the um, end of, and then the front of um, a choir. 
And that was the end of the vision. It ended. Okay. I know this is going really long, but it's, it's such a, it is a long story. <laughs> so, anyway. Uh, so while I was there, uh, that was the end of the vision. Now, when I woke up from the vision, I had, I thought, what in the world was that? I didn't know it was a vision really from God so much that I just, I just didn't understand what had happened because it was, just, this is one of the first open visions I've ever had. And it was uh, beyond my experience. So I didn't really understand it now. So that was the end of my fast. Next day I started eating and, and, uh, anyway, I had a job interview to go to, uh, the next day or, or two days later and, I didn't get the job. I was very disappointed. And I was on the bus coming home from this job interview and I knew I didn't get. And as I was on the bus, I started to cry. And I was I didn't care who saw me. I was just weeping like like a baby and I just said, "You know, God, I don't understand why this is happening to me. I just can't seem to get anywhere. I don't know why I can't get a job." I was just moaning and groaning and having a fit. And then I said, "Well, you know, Lord, uh, um if you want me to go to Africa, I'll go to Africa." <laughs> Anyway, I get home from the uh, the interview. I walk in the door, and there's a message on the machine, in the answering machine, and I press the button. And there was a message there for me saying, Barbara Jean, we need you to call. Uh, this is so-and-so, so-and-so from Toronto. We need you to call. Please call us. Um, we need to find it if you would come for an audition. So I don't, what? <laughs> so I called the number, and I talked to somebody who was part of the auditioning uh, casting calls, whatever for the show. And they said, we would need you to come fly to, to Toronto to do this audition for the show. Uh, we really like, you know, need to hear you sing. And, uh, and I said, Oh, okay, well, let me take your number and let me call you back <laughs> because, and they said, what? I think she was confused why I didn't say, Oh, sure. I'll come right away. But she didn't know I was absolutely 100% broke. I mean, I didn't have two cents to rub together. I was totally broke. And I, I, I had to pray about it. I didn't know what to do because I didn't have any way to get to Toronto. How was I going to fly to, to, to Toronto for an audition? I didn't even know if I was going to get. I mean, where was I going to get the money? And then if I didn't get the job, then why should I spend hundreds of dollars for an audition? I, I didn't know whether I was going to get or not. So Anyway, this is an interesting part of the dream. So uh, the whole, uh, not dream, but the whole thing that had happened uh, several years ago, many years ago now. Uh, so I put down the phone and I, I did, I was in a, I was in an absolute panic. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. God, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And my mother, who I was living with at the time, I didn't, I, I, she wasn't home for me to talk to her about it. I was all alone and I was just crying. God, I don't know what to do. You know, I, I'm really confused. And so I decided to call a prayer line. <laughs> so I called up a prayer line and said, look, I need prayer right now because I, I've been given this opportunity to go for an audition. Someone wants me to come for an audition and I don't know what to do. I have no idea. I have no money. I don't know how I'm going to get there. If I say yes, I just don't know what to do. And I've never f flown anywhere. I've never gone anywhere before in my whole life. I've never been by myself, really. Uh, I lived on my own shortly for a little while, but I had never really been on my own. So anyway, the woman, and I was hoping she would say, this is what God says you should do. You should do diddy yada yada. And this is what he's going to do, blah, 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 blah. But she didn't say that. She said, okay, well, let me pray for you and that whatever you, whatever decision you make will be the right decision. Well, that didn't make me too happy, but I said, okay. So she prays for me and said, Lord, you know, just in the name of Jesus, just give her peace that whatever happens will be the right, right decision for her and that you are walking with her and that you have got her, you know, you're going to take care of the situation for her. So she said that was, that was the end of the prayer. And I didn't feel any more peaceful about the situation after she had finished the prayer, but I said, thank you very much. And then I thought about it for a few moments and I said, well, I'm going to have to call him back and say, no, I can't do the audition. I can't do it because I can't, I don't have, I have any money. So I called back the casting woman and I said, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to say no because I, I just can't come. And she said, well, why not? And I said, well, because I can't afford 
to come out to Toronto to audition. I just don't have the money for it. And she said, well, we'll fly you out. We'll pay your way. <laughs> when she said that, all of us in that, I said, then yes, I'll come. And this sense of peace that fell on me at that moment was so overwhelming. I can't tell you. It was amazing. The sense of peace that just, whoo, all the turmoil that I had been feeling for not just those two days or that moment, but for all these almost two years of building turmoil of what do I do? Where am I supposed to go? What's my destiny? What do you want me to do in this life, dear Lord? What, what is it you want from me? It had all just washed away in those, that moment. And God's peace just flooded my soul. And I said, okay, I'm coming. So <laughs> they sent me the tickets. I was so ecstatic. I just praised the Lord. I was just jumping up and down. I was so happy. And I knew I had the job. Now, this is not, the story didn't quite end there because um, I didn't have a place to stay. I didn't have any money for a hotel. Well, when my family found out that I was coming to Toronto, well, I had a cousin who was living in Toronto who wasn't there at the moment. But she had an apartment that she said, she was in Vancouver at the time. She had an apartment that she was subletting in Toronto. She said, I'm not going to be there for that amount of time. Here's the keys. Here's the keys to that place. You just go in and you can stay there for the you know three or four days that you're going to be there. And I think I was only there two, th three days. It's, it's just three days. And uh, here's here are the keys. <laughs> so that was taken care of right away. That was taken care of. Um, turned out the apartment was only a few blocks from the place where the audition was. It was only one a few bu uh, bus stops away and on one road from the audition place. How could that have been a coincidence, people? It wasn't a coincidence. It was all ordered by the Lord. My steps were ordered by the Lord. And so um, so that was taken care of. And then when I got to Toronto, so that I took, you know, got to my place, a taxi, took a taxi, got there, got to the audition. Okay, now this was the interesting thing. There were hundreds of people auditioning for this show, hundreds of people. And, I mean, they had several days of casting calls and, and people coming in and singers and dancers and whatnot. And so I went in for my audition. I was, I was scheduled for a certain time. I got there. I think I waited about 10, 15 minutes. I went in for my audition. I sang summertime and <laughs> the miracles didn't stop because while I was, I was singing, I was singing. Okay. And I, I could, you know, there were several people, the, the producer and the choreographer and the director and yada, yada, and the music director were all sitting around in this, you know, this table, you know, while I sang, I was not feeling particularly nervous, but, but for some reason I forgot the words to the second verse of summertime. I, it just, I just completely blanked out. So the, the little intro, and I sang the first verse okay, and then when I came to the intro, the, the intro for the second verse, da 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 da, was almost over. I mean, like it was split second, people, split second from making a complete fool of myself in front of all these important people. I heard a voice in my head. This voice whispered the first phrase of that song just as I was getting ready to make a complete fool of myself, saying, I forgot the words. This voice, the Holy Spirit, or my angel, spoke the words to me, knowing that I was in trouble. And I was able to get it out, and I hung that, that last note up in the air, that high B flat. It just, it just stayed up there and shimmered. It was gorgeous. So <laughs> that was the end of my, they asked me a couple of questions, and then I walked out into this um, secondary room um, that was empty. The producer followed me into this room. And said, I just want to ask you a couple of questions. And he asked me a couple of questions. And then I got the nerve. I said, I don't know where I got this nerve. I think it was just God prompted me. Because I said, so do I have the job? Now, you don't ask the producer of a show, especially a big show. Um, do you have the job? I was a nobody. I'm a nothing. I was auditioning for the, cho the chorus. I mean, you don't ask the producer while you're auditioning if you have the job. But for some reason, I did. I said, do I have the job? And he said, yes, you do. See, God didn't even have me wait 
to, to wait to get the answer whether I was going to get the job or not. He gave me the answer immediately. Yes, you have the job. So I walked away from my audition knowing I had the job. <laughs> and it turned out when later on, a couple of, I think a couple months later when I had to go in for, you know, they flew me out and they had me do my fittings and they were redoing the rehearsals and we're going through all this stuff. And it was a fascinating experience. People I had a really interesting time. It was um, an amazing um, experience for me to, um, part of my little much afraid experience, faith building times that the Lord has brought me through. I am so thankful because I've had so many interesting things. I look back at my life. I'm only 52. I mean, but in my 52 years have been packed with adventure, packed with adventures. Um, some were good and some adventures I'm pretty happy to be done with when they were finished. But I, I'm going to try and tell, give a couple more videos out and just, to, you know, show share some more of these really interesting times I've had. Oh, by the way, I just wanted to finish that. When I came back to Toronto, what I was finishing saying was that apartment that my cousin had subletted, well, she no longer needed. So she gave the apartment to me. So I had a place to stay when I came back to Toronto. To, to live in Toronto for the, the, the couple of years that I was there. So, you know, God is so good. And I'm sure you all have some great experiences to share as well. Um, but these are my stories. And I'm just going to, I'm going to put them out there because I don't know how much longer we have to be here. And I just want to, I, I just want to share them because I've never really shared these with very many people. And, and here you are, my YouTube family and captured audience. <laughs> Of course, you can turn me off anytime you like, but uh, <laughs> uh, I hope this is an encouragement to you to to trust in God who who sometimes delays answers for his own reasons, you know, and he does have a best. And sometimes we're a little reluctant to, to, to go through the doors that God has for us. But when we do give in to the Lord and, and, and surrender to him, he does have some great adventures waiting for all of us. So anyway, this is all I want to say for now. I've got several more vi videos planned, whether I get them all done today. I hope I do at least several of uh, some of them. Uh, I will talk to you later. God bless.